Hey everybody, Mark McComb here from Microchip Minutes, and in this episode we're going to use the analog to digital converter with computation peripheral to convert the voltage present on the pin connected to the potentiometer on an MPLAB express board to a 10-bit value using burst averaging mode. We're actually going to configure the peripheral to automatically compare that 10-bit average value against some user-defined upper and lower threshold. We are going to confirm if a threshold value has been crossed by transmitting some text using a printf statement over the USB to a computer running a terminal program. I have MPLAB Express opened in my browser in which I've created a new project for the PIC16 F18855 and I have the code configurator open. Inside of the code configurator I'm using the default settings in the system module. I've also set up my USART as in previous videos to transmit a baud rate of 9600 and the redirect to STDIO to USART box is checked. I've connected the transmit signal to pin RC0 and the receive signal to pin RC1. That's all we need, so let's start the clock. I'm going to add the ADCC peripheral from the device resources to the project resources by double-clicking on it. Highlighting the ADCC peripheral, I'm going to make sure I'm operating in burst averaging mode, and I'm going to use the system clock as the clock base and scale that by 2. I'll set my result alignment to right to give me a result value between 0 and 1023. Here I'm going to enable continuous operation. What this means is that once an ADCC conversion is triggered, the ADCC peripheral will continue sampling a pin until our threshold conditions, which we'll set up next, are met. In that instance, we're going to select stop on an interrupt, and that will stop this continuous sampling. I'll set the acquisition time to one, which means the ADCC is actually gonna wait two microseconds before performing the conversion. Next, I'm going to expand the computation feature and configure our error calculation to be based on the filtered value, which is our averaged result after the burst averaging is completed, minus the set point value. Since we're going to leave the set point value at zero, our error value is essentially just going to be the filtered value. Next, I'll define our threshold limits as 100 for the lower threshold and 500 as the upper threshold. Let's set up burst averaging to add up 32 consecutive reads of the pin connected to the potentiometer and then right shift that result by five to obtain the filtered value before comparing against the thresholds we just defined. Let's enable threshold interrupts here and define the threshold interrupt conditions as when the error value is less than the lower threshold or greater than the upper threshold. Down in the pin manager, I'm going to tie the RA4 pin to the ADCC input by clicking here under the RA4 column in the ANX row. Last step, let's go into the pin module and change the ADCC input to something a little more meaningful like pot. And that's it for the code configurator, so we can hit the generate button. I'll click OK. Let's open up the ADCC.h file in the newly generated code and scroll down to locate a function called ADCC start conversion. I'm going to highlight that and then copy it. Now I'll open up the main.c source file and scroll down to just before the while one loop in our main function and paste that function we just copied there. I'm going to change the argument to our potentiometer pin signal we renamed to pot. This function is actually going to configure the ADCC to start converting the pot pin, doing burst averages until one of the threshold conditions we defined earlier are met. If that happens, we do want to generate an interrupt. So let's go ahead and uncomment these two macros that are needed whenever we want to use interrupts. So when the interrupt occurs, we need to execute some code or an interrupt service routine. We'll put that inside of the adcc.c source file here at the bottom of the code inside of the adcc threshold ISR. Let's add a printf statement here and what this is going to do is notify us over the USART and ultimately the USB that an interrupt has occurred. Let's print the current filter value to the screen. Finally, we're going to want to restart that ADCC conversion process on the pot, so let's call that ADCC start conversion function again at the end of the service routine. And that's it, let's go ahead and stop the clock. After clicking the make and program device button and then dragging that generated .hex file onto the express board, we should see that by turning the potentiometer to change the voltage on the pot pin, we generate interrupts whenever the upper threshold is crossed and again if the lower threshold is crossed. For more project examples, to visit our wiki or to take part in the MPLAB Express forums, please visit mplabexpress.microchip.com. My name is Mark McComb. Thanks for watching.